It's like playing a big global game of musical chairs. And, you know, in our lifetimes, up until real recently, there was always plenty of chairs. There was as many chairs as we needed. So, you know, when the music stops, we all sat down and laughed and we didn't really understand what the game was because nobody was short of chair. But now we're short of chair. And we realize that if you don't get a chair, you die. So, uh, people are going to fight really hard to get a chair. That's really unpredictable. How far will they go? It's really, it's really hard uh, to predict, but it's not going to be good because they're really, the music really is going to stop periodically for here, there, and the other thing. Then there really isn't going to be enough chairs, and you really are going to die if you don't get a chair. Not you, Ken. You're not going to. Okay, so there's this basic concept um, that's come to be known as peak oil. And what peak oil is, is describing is that uh, for the vast majority of uh, the history of humankind, um, all of our work and effort has been limited uh, by the availability of the energy that we had to use. But over this very brief period, uh, we've had cheap and abundant energy. And um, it's a very brief period over the history of humankind, but in our lives, it's more than our, our lifespan. So it seems like a long time for us. You know, all we've ever known is cheap and abundant energy. But, uh, and there's still people who debate about whether or not the, the peak has been reached or the peak will be reached in five years, ten years, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether it's already come or, or has come. The fact is there, there's a peak and it, whether it hasn't come or, any, or will come, what is after the peak is that the amount of energy, the total amount of energy available to the world is going to be diminishing, not increasing. And it was this increased amount of energy that, that drove everything, that drove the industrial uh, world, that, that drove the, the culture of our world. So as it diminishes, the, the amount of work has to be diminished because the work comes from the energy, and if there's less energy, there's less work, less of everything. So in my family's case, we have been looking at this situation and in thinking about how this can affect my kids and my grandkids, because you know, whether it comes, uh, whether it came in 2005 or whether it comes in 2015 or whether it comes in 2020, that matters to me, but it won't matter to my children or my grandchildren or my great-grandchildren. That, that won't matter at all. They'll be post-peak. So we've been trying to um, optimize you know, are uh, dealing with the situation. Now, some people want to call that, you know, survivalism. They want to use the word survival. You know, like you're, you're reading all these survivalist books and things. And I've been thinking about that a lot, Dave, and I, I think people aren't looking at the, the term right, because they use the word survival. Usually, people say, you know, you're prepared to to survive an emergency. You know, do, you, do you have uh, you know, food or energy or water? You know, like uh, in your car when you go for a trip in the desert in case you get a flat tire. And, and you just want to survive for a short period of time until help comes or until, until normalcy is restored. And, and then you can go about your merry way. But in this case, the short period of time where things aren't normal is this abundant, cheap energy. That is the emergency. That is the crisis time. And what's happening now is we're going to go back to life as it's always been. Well, energy is not cheap and abundant and, and widely available. Trouble is we have 
a lot more people on a, you know, on a per capita basis. We've definitely reached the peak of, of energy consumption many years ago. So in looking forward, not trying to get into the debates over when exactly it's going to happen because it doesn't matter. At some point, and it's not going to happen you know, all around the world at the same stroke of midnight on some particular day. It's going to happen locally, regionally. It's going to happen to one family on one street and, and it won't happen to the other family for a while later because they have other resources and things. But everyone's going to reach their, their post-peak moment whenever they realize that we're never going to have that again. We're just not going to have it. It's just not going to happen. There's no amount of fixing that. It's, it's, it's the way it is. I use the analogy all the time. You know, if, if you had only, if this was your first and only day and you were born at six o'clock in the morning, and, and I'm trying to explain the concept of darkness, you'd never have experienced it, and you've, you've never prepared for it. Why should I have to prepare for darkness? It's bright out. It's, it's been getting brighter all day, you know. Well, in a few hours, I don't know precisely when, I haven't calculated everything else, but in a few hours, it's going to be dark, and you're going to have to deal with the darkness. So we're going to have to deal with less energy. So we uh, a long time ago made the decision um, that it would be easier for our family to prepare for a time of less energy consumption to first of all go to a place where they use less energy anyhow now so we left North America we left America specifically because they use so much energy and why not? They can get it, use it, go ahead, I don't care. But it's, it, you know, I'm not, I'm not an anti-energy crusader or something. But it's just, for me and my family, we're trying to prepare for what's coming. I mean, my kids are, I hope they live a long time, and, and I hope my grandchildren live even longer. So I'm looking out for that distance. So we came here, people here use a lot less energy, just moving here. And we're continuing to prepare for the, the time that's coming. Well, that's a good point. You know, why, why specifically did we come here? There's, there is, um, uh, and, I, and I'm not saying everyone should come here, everyone has their own opinion on where they should go and what they should do. Uh, uh, you know, in terms of the peak energy problem, it was just that we were going to a place where people use less energy as it is. And culturally, you know, hitching a ride isn't, uh, so difficult and, and there is a much uh, higher defined and higher developed public transportation system here than there is in America and uh, um, we don't have freezing weather here and you know, we don't have to heat our houses so much we do have to have air conditioning but you know we don't have to heat our, uh, heat our houses and whenever we build houses that are um, designed for this negative environment. We won't even have to air condition them. They'll be naturally air conditioned. And um, so there, you know, people can argue about, you know, whether or not we made the, the best choice or the right choice. We made the right choice for us. And, and you know, according to our parameters, this is the place for us to come. Uh, and, and this is where we're building uh, our future. Uh, and, and let me say right off the bat, if you're not prepared for night, like I was describing, then it's a crisis because you don't have lights and you don't know what to do and you're going to run around panicky because you can't see and you're going to bump into things, get hurt, and you might die. But if you're prepared for it and if you have lights and you say, well, night's a good time to go to sleep, you know, and you've got a nice bed and you're just going to go go to sleep there you, it's a good time and you can have a party at night or you know there's a lot of things you could do at night that are better than the day it's cooler you know you could take advantage of the conditions there and you can have a wonderful night you know just like you have a wonderful day and we can have a wonderful time beyond the peak of oil if we're prepared for it i mean my family we think it's going to be fine. There's, we can see long lists of advantageous uh, conditions that are coming, and and uh, we think it'll be fine. Uh, one of the things 
uh, that we like specifically about this area, you know, this country and, and the Middle East in general, is that that people do entertain each other more here, or they do do things together more. They, uh, uh, you, you know, I've lived in many neighborhoods in the United States where you, you didn't know anybody in the neighborhood and nobody wanted to know you. I mean, they wanted to put up a big fence and that was their quarter acre, you know, their dunum and uh, their kingdom, you know, and they wanted, didn't want you to come in. They would have been happy if they had a moat around it. And uh, uh, it's not that way here. I mean, you know, in America, you have to wait for an invite to go visit someone. And here, you know, you're blessing the house by going to visit somebody. So the, the, the philosophy is totally different. And, and it's more conducive, uh, more, more in line, more congruent with the, the life that's coming. So, so you know, we, we love it. So we think life's going to be great. Uh, this, isn't, this isn't a sad story by any means. But the energy cost is, is such a fundamental thing, the, the energy cost, that people tend to overlook it, like the air we breathe in. It's like, you know, are fish aware of the water? You know, are we aware of, of how important the energy is? Well, we become aware whenever we reach a crisis point, whenever the, the price of energy gets so expensive that it impacts so many different things. You know, you know all the credit cards are maxed out and, and uh, it becomes a crisis, you know? You, you just can't keep filling up that Toyota Corolla's fuel tank for a hundred bucks anymore. You know, you just can't afford it. So uh, people will be screaming for immediate answers, and there's where the real problems come, because there aren't any short, quick, sweet answers for any of these issues. If there were, people would have done it. I mean, there's been lots of people looking at this, looking for opportunities to make a profit. Why not? And there aren't any short, sweet things in here. Um, you know, you and but how people are dealing with it in the present is that they're just like trying harder. They're just pushing harder against the wind. They're just, you know pushing horror against the stream that's that's coming against them and eventually they're going to lose their footing fall down and get swept away yeah, and that's what's going to happen it's